Good morning, folks. Disaster has struck again in the United States. I don't have damage totals pre-sunrise, but there are deaths and we're just not done yet. As sunset hits the convergence line each day, we shift to major tornado watches and flash flooding. The convergence is caused when a low-pressure system puts a counterclockwise suction to the wind as we look from above, and the cold northern air is slammed into hot, wet gulf air and the reaction is those pop-up clouds and storms. Tonight, they'll be on a more diagonal line rather than the south-to-north convergence of the last week. Also of note, you remember the water vapor surging to Europe? You might think this infrared image is from yesterday, but it's not. The storm grabbed the moisture and refused to move. Flooding is now a dire concern in localized regions of Germany and surrounding countries. Switching away from the weather with an actual galactic collision shot. We've shown two different sims in the last month, but it's nice to see the real deal. In terms of quaking yesterday, the southern Pacific began rumbling more than normal, with New Zealand taking one as well. But as much as we should notice that, the USGS is again missing North Atlantic quakes. Let's all contact them today and ask whether they think the quakes didn't happen and their seismologist peers across the pond aren't worth the salt, or they just decided to omit these quakes for another reason. 96,000 subscribers have never used it for anything, but I'd like an answer from them today. Wouldn't mind one from the sun, either. Popped an M flare from a pitiful sunspot almost out of nowhere, like a lion's roar from a baby bunny rabbit. Whatever, we'll take it. Interesting, the spots ahead and on the south may actually be developing a bit. Now, we've been watching a large plasma filament above the coronal holes for days. And goodbye. She ejected straight north of no threat to Earth. We still got one trailing the hole facing Earth today. Folks, NASA is stumped on this, claiming they don't know what it is that hit us in the solar wind. Well, that's nice. How about looking four days ago at the edge of the coronal hole beginning to encroach center disk? One of your graphics even pointed the solar wind coming out that way. Remember, these streams have a density ramp followed by a speed ramp. I see a peak and fall in orange density, and now speed beginning to rise. My money's on the coronal hole stream. Magnetosphere just got his butt kicked, plasma penetrating significantly with strong inductions returning to the baseline here. We're in a geomagnetic storm at level 2, a moderate event, and luckily this has put an end to the electron storm. So where does this leave us with a quake watch, since I've been saying we need to wait for this flux to end before the quakes will begin? It has been multiple days since we've had a 6-pointer, let alone a major uptick. But first, note that the KP spikes over 5 decrease seismicity during that peak and only during it. But that won't last long today, and with the electrons gone and the umbral field open, we are entering day 2 of this watch with only the moderate upticks I've mentioned so far. Remember, this coronal hole extends back further than I initially anticipated, and do I see a southern partner just behind the northern aspect? I think so, bottom left. This is quite the situation on the disc with coronal holes. Major quake watches last four to eight days, rather than the one to three of minor watches, and I think this one might need the full run with the backside coronal holes. Give you some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.22 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.